Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I hope to send a few more satellites over to the moon to support any future lunar missions. But I also want to try and do something a little bit more than that, because just doing that... Well, it won't actually be boring, because I actually have no idea how to position satellites at different times. Uh, you see, uh, when positioning them around Earth, I did four satellites on a single launch and relied on the fact that the Earth was rotating in order to uh, reposition them so that uh, they were at staggered intervals. With the Moon, I'm not too sure about that technique. I've got an idea in mind, but I'm not, I don't know if it'll work or not. We'll have to see. So. So yeah, so that's the rub, and so there's a little bit of uncertainty, even for me there's a complete uncertainty about how I'm going to do that. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about how I should have done that, but it's a little bit more fun for me if I don't actually know what I'm going to do and uh, end up finding out something about how things work. Uh, but I want to add one more thing to the mix, and that is a keythane detector. We haven't really delved into this yet. Uh, we happen to have enough science for it. In fact, it's, I think, the only thing we have enough science for right now. Uh, just checking through, well, except for these things that don't work. But yeah, everything else costs more. We do have enough for the key thing detector, though, so I guess I might as well add it to the probes, since, well, why not? Uh, I think it's fairly light, reasonably so. Ah, there is the thing that it has a maximum altitude of 250 kilometers. We'll probably want our probes to have a periapsis around there, but an apoapsis much higher. So, yeah, but uh, let, let's pick that up while we're here, and let's see what comes next. Uh, we already got get a drilling unit here, but it's 500 science for that. So we could pretty much, uh, we could drill Keythane, but we wouldn't be able to convert Keythane into anything useful with that. Interesting. Okay, uh, so let's go to the VAB and see how I might or might not do that. Now you'll recall that we had this sort of commsat pack before. And it's not a bad idea. But I don't think we'll have enough Delta V for anything with just this. Well, 1384 is not bad. Uh, that is pretty good. And they are very convincing little little guys. So that's interesting. However, I do think that we're, we're going to need one of, uh, one of these antennas as well. Because each of these probably should try and communicate with mission control on, uh, to cover the times that the satellite we already have around the moon won't be. Uh, it'll be on the opposite side of the moon from, from the Earth. So perhaps we should add... Oh, these are actually too small, huh? Um, which will actually cover it. I'm so used to these being enough, but uh, I forget that was with the multiplier. Oh, th these will work. Okay. Point... And how much did this take? 0 0.02, 0 0.03? It should be reasonably close. Oh, I already had that up. Yeah, we've got plenty of uh, generation of battery power here. Hmm. So, I guess I'll remove one of these, these antennae on... Okay, that's not right. Yeah. Let's just remove one of these antenna on each of these. And I'll stagger which one. Oh, well, there's some clipping, isn't there? These clip into that tank. That's bound to cause a problem. Okay. So, perhaps we should mount them a little bit lower. Okay, so we've got those. Uh, would it be possible to get the keythane detector on? That's a pretty big thing. Maybe if we relocate this antenna, it would be possible. 
Let's have that more there. And then that key thing detector on here. Gotta make the fairing look a little bit weird, but that we've got a bigger fairing this time since we're launching the, this on the Forsetti. Ooh, the key thing detectors have too much of a drain. Huh. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to leave them off. They're... They take too much electric charge. This will have to be good enough. Okay, so let's try and send these over first. And I want to give them a little bit more fuel because repositioning is going to be a big thing. Actually, probably making them fatter would be the thing. Try to just get their dimensions the same. Oh, they're conic. I hate when that happens, okay. Okay, so I've resized them a bit. They should each have, uh, let's say, 1,890 delta V. Now, yeah, that'll be the first one to go. All right. Okay, so I think this will be a decent payload. It's pretty light for the moon, which hopefully will mean that the uh, Forsetti will be able to do what it did with our last launch, which was to bring it all into orbit and everything. Uh, fortunately, not very tall for the Forsetti, unlike the Dellinger, which was launched, uh, which launched it into Kerbin or uh, Earth orbit. Uh, I think we should reduce the diameter of this for this payload so that we can use the normal fairing rings. Can we do that? Okay, so I'm gonna try and use this fairing ring. And I'll reduce the size of this tank uh, in in its top diameter, not in its actual mass. Uh, so I'll have to conform to this. So total mass 10 point, let's say 4 tons. And so I'm going to adjust its top diameter to... That's pretty... But anyway, uh, we extend first. Okay, that's close enough. And in context, uh, in context with the rest of the vehicle, it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, uh, I think I've got all the all the staging right. And let's just uh, try this out. This is going to be an experiment of some sort. So let's just get out there and see what happens. Okay, here we are in the launch pad, but let's see what our situation with regard to the moon is. Let's get rendezvous planner out and select the moon. Oh look we have a little little satellite around there now and 11.6 so hopefully we well would probably pass the point. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna have to go all the way around. Okay, fine. Okay, right around here should do. Stabilizing physics, and I don't know, shouldn't uh, the launch clamps keep these topped off? We're about a hundred units of Hydrogen short should be good enough to go. I mean, there's no the marginal benefit of those hundred units is not much. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on. I suppose we should light this properly as well. 
Okay, so the Forseti attempting to deliver four satellites to the moon. And it has cleared the tower. Okay, booster separation. All right. And it continues. Let's begin a bit of a turn here. Okay, everything looks good as we are going to be passing Mach soon. A little bit late, but uh, that's pretty standard for the Forosetti. Okay, we have broken the speed of sound. Some oscillations. I'm familiar with this particular kind of oscillation. Uh, it's SAS dealing with a payload that might be swinging a little bit inside the fairing. Looks okay so far. If it gets a hand, uh, Solution is just to take SAS offline briefly, wait for the rocket to stabilize, and then, and then all will be well. Okay, I think the oscillations are getting out of hand. I've got to take SAS off. Otherwise, the vehicle is going to be experiencing some pretty dramatic g-forces pretty soon. Now I'll bring it back on again. So obviously this whole launch relies on the ability to relight the third stage and this the payload doesn't have quite the same same ability to do that as the Clark satellite did. Uh oh, uh oh. But it does have some RCS and some reaction wheel power, so hopefully it'll be enough. Gonna have to keep an eye on this now. Once we stage, it should be a little bit smoother, but right now, as the G-forces on this stage build up, the... SAS's desire to correct certain things makes it unstable. Mm hmm. It's difficult for me to correct once it starts wiggling. Just looking forward to staging soon. SAS is not going to do things right. Okay. Alright. And... And now SAS.
Okay, should be fairings. Alright, let's dump those. Okay, and we need to get the antenna on the base activated so that we can maintain communication. Alright, I think we're we're a little bit smoother now and I don't know, uh, sort of in Kerbal Space Program, even with Deadly Reentry, with Kerbal Space Program, the, the, the minutes of terror are really on launch. Uh, not so much on reentry. Uh, of course, we're not actually sitting in the capsules, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, most of the tension is on launch. Okay, we've got a pretty good trajectory right now. 0.55 degrees off on the inclination. Well, I think I'll uh, catch up with you once this stage is close to running out. I have to say, the lag right now is quite long in that uh, if you take a look, every second ticks by. It takes more than a second, much more than a second, and the, my frame rates are horrible. Right now I'm getting 5 frames per second, 6 frames, 7, or oh, thereabouts. So, uh, if yeah, that that's that's the state of my computer right now. Just for you to know, uh, my computer is not too happy with me. Though there might be background processes running that are complicating things. It's not entirely Kerbal right now. Okay, we're about to run uh, this stage. We have a relative inclination of 0 0.22, 0 0.21 adjusting well and, and yeah uh, we are on a nominal trajectory in every respect just waiting for the end of this burn there we are and I really need to put separation rockets but yeah we continue Okay, so we're coming up on apoapsis and uh, the end of our burn. Of course, I deliberately kept it close to apoapsis during the final phase of the burn, so that is why we happen to be reaching apoapsis right now. Relative inclination is 0.17 degrees, which is pretty good. Okay, so KSB thinks we're in orbit, but we're not quite there yet. At least not a stable orbit, such as it is in this particular version. Okay, 271 by 266, and it looks like we need to get some solar panels out. Okay, good. And I'm also going to extend the dish here on this base one and have it target, uh, well, let's just have it target Kennedy Space Center directly. Is it, uh, it's on the dark side. Uh, let me actually roll the craft so that I can see what's going on on that side. Okay, it didn't activate. Uh, 
as I expected, we've got a little bit more terrain on our... Well, okay, it looks okay. Alright. Okay. Now, the one we've got there already is going retrograde around the moon. I'm wondering whether I should make that a thing here. Or not. I don't think so. Not based on what I intend to do. What I actually want is for... Oh, well, we'll, we'll get there and we'll see. Um, this is pretty good. I think I just need to tweak it a little bit. Mm. Okay, 231. 231 kilometers seems to be fine. And actually, uh, because our inclination is so close to that of the moon, it doesn't look like we'll need a uh, mid-course plane change unless I get this burn wrong. Okay, so slowly turning towards the maneuver node. It'll be a while before we need to execute this maneuver, but when we do, it will be that much. Actually, I probably don't need flight computer right now because our fuel flow is unstable and I'll probably have to try and spin this craft in order to get it stable. But let's get closer to the to the planned maneuver here. Okay, it did one of those tiny little bursts that it does, so now it changed. What sort of... We are unstable. Okay, uh, let me take flight computer off. Um, maybe having SAS on while I'm trying to spin the craft isn't the brightest thing, so let's take that off as well. I still don't know exactly how long this will take to burn. If I had the stage time, I could at least estimate it, but I don't have that right now. So, um, let's see cooperating very well. I'm just trying to spin it using the reaction wheels as such as they are. Sorry for not putting lights on this thing. Let's see. Still very unstable. Not a good sign. I'm so surprised. Uh, we, we are turning fairly vigorously. Huh. Could it be that this technique does not work right now? That would be unfortunate. Okay, well I'm activating RCS to try and add a little bit more rotation to the picture. Okay, well, I'm doing something wrong. Let me get Flight Computer to stabilize this for a sec. We're in orbit, so... We could take an entire other orbit to figure this out, if necessary. Maybe I'm just spinning the wrong way. I don't know. Well, let's wait till Flight Computer figures out how to get this thing pointed in the right direction, and then we'll think about it. The next thing to try would be a linear burst of the RCS ports. That in the prograde vector.
Okay, so let's try using the RCS ports as as knowledge. Now this is uh, unfortunate because, of course, the RCS ports I've got also feed the rockets on each of the satellites, so we're taking up possible maneuvering ability here. Okay, uh, I need a uh, flight computer to not do that right now. Otherwise we're going to waste RCS. This is not helping by any... any indication here. It was so cooperative last time. Looks like we do need the LH rockets after all. Well, there is another option. I'm going to turn off RCS. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice one of these. I'm going to activate this engine. Oh, well, and it's paired engine as well. Right. So, we're going to sacrifice a bit of juice in that particular rocket. A particular satellite, I mean. So... Well, how do I do this without... Well, I guess I'll have to just... Really? Even with this much thrust, I'm not uh, settling. Okay, now we got it. Okay, uh, well, we're getting there at least. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to th throttle down. Now, throttling down won't affect this engine because this one doesn't throttle. I'm going to click node on the flight computer and I'm also going to... Oh, this could be very bad. Actually, hold on. Let me wait till flight computer finishes. It's, as you can see, the payload seems to be wiggling a bit thanks to the fact that those thrusters are active. going to be tough. Gosh. Uh. Okay, good, good. All right. Well, so much for using flight computer to do the actual burn. I guess I'll have to just time it at this point. All right. Well, yeah. So we need LH rockets, but I think I've got a solution. I think uh, what we need to do is put some MMHN two hundred four in this stage, and instead of using some sort of solid rocket booster, use action grouped one kilonewton thrusters like that. I think that would be a much better solution. Still a lot of wiggling. Going to tell Flight Computer to shove off for a sec and uh, have SAS do the stabilization.
Okay, it's gotta be a long burn, so let's just, uh, well, I'll see you at the other side of it. Yeah, I tried. Uh, SES had it all nice and stable, and I tried activating Flight Computer again, and again it starts wiggling out. I don't like it. It doesn't seem to be able to keep this thing stable, even as much as SES can, which is, you know, SES obviously had its flaws on the launch, but Flight Computer is even worse. Hopefully, the fact that we're going to be lighter when we get to the moon means that restarting this engine will be easier in that uh, trying to spin it will perhaps create the kind of acceleration we need to settle the fuel down. Okay, getting close here and of course uh, this engine is either on or off so i going to try and get this as close as possible. Okay, what did we get? Uh, let's get that out of the way. 226? That's fine. I'm, I'm not particularly worried about any inclination. So 220, 226 kilometers is excellent, uh, considering I had to do it the way I did. Um, and I think we have enough fuel to get this into orbit as long as we can re relight that engine. So, we've got that dish tuned to the KSC. So let us proceed. Let's just go go ahead and well I don't know shall we tune it to something other than the KSC on the off chance that it's on the opposite side. <sighs> or there's so many options. No, I don't think we need to do that. Because of our satellite already there. Oh, that's this is complicated. Alright, I'm just gonna take it over there and see how it works. I don't know which side of the planet the KSC will be on by the time we get there. I suppose I could figure it out. And then we regain connection. See, there's no point connecting to Pratchett Station with this, since if Pratchett Station is on the right side of the planet uh, of uh, Earth, then obviously our satellite already around the moon will be able to communicate, and as long as we can communicate with Clark satellite, uh, it should be fine. So, so we don't need to have this one tuned to Pratchett Station unless the Clark satellite is on the opposite side of the moon from Earth. Oh. Anyway, we have a very interesting loop around the moon from this view, but we'll see what it actually looks like once we get into the lunar sphere of influence. I think we... well... What's a periapsis like? A day and ten hours. It's a long time. It's Okay, let's get into the Moon Sphere influence. Okay, here we are. We do currently have communication with uh, with the KSC, I think. Hmm. Interesting setup I've got here. Obviously, periapsis is not going to be a good place to communicate with anything. Will be on the opposite side of the moon, but we can uh, do what we did with the Clark satellite and preemptively get into orbit. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna wait any longer. Let's see about this. We need to 
I mean, uh, we're just gonna be burning retrograde anyway. It's very stable. Well, let's see what happens after we turn it around to retrograde. Might not be so stable at that point. Um, okay, actually, with the one... Oh, God, but, uh... Flight computer is so unstable with this thing. But, yeah, alright. Try and turn it retrograde without breaking it apart, please. Okay, so which of the many techniques shall we use to get it stable again? I'm definitely gonna put uh, the one kill Newton thrusters on the base next time. But let's try RCS first this time. Okay, very stable. I'll have it do the pre-programmed burn since it's in control anyway and we've got the time delay. Uh, and we want meters per second. Burn. Take our CS off. Oh. Alright. So we will get into orbit around the moon. What we do after that, I think we'll have to wait until a further episode. Ooh, what if our periapsis gets too low? Hmm. No, it can't. That's not the... well, yes it can. Uh, okay, um... Uh, let me tell it to stop this. All right, well, that is too low. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait until this maneuver to do anything, and we need to adjust this. Just burning too early here. And also didn't really aim at the maneuver node, aimed at retrograde instead. Alright, let's see if this is <laughs> unstable again. Predictable, okay. But let's get closer to the maneuver node and hope that we maintain connection with Earth before our maneuver. Now, let's add meter per second. Let's do the RCS thing again. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. But we're burning a lot of the fuel that I was relying on in order to get this whole thing into position. So I don't know if I have enough fuel anymore to do what I was intending with these satellites. We'll see. All right, once again with this engine, but I don't know how many more times we can do this. I mean, well, I do. We can probably do two more lights of this engine, but the, we're, we're running out of the fuel up here with the satellites, so might not be such a good thing to even try one more time. The maximum range of the AIES um, antenna is 10,000 10, uh, kilometers. So what we really need is to have an apoapsis less than that. And well, it says that we're done with that burn. So let's not have it wiggle around anymore. Let's just have it point retrograde for now. Looks like we're still gonna be in communication for a while. Clock for SETI also has communication. But we're on opposite sides of the plant right now. 
All right, I think I'm really running out of time in this, uh, just in my normal recording block. So getting the satellites into position around the moon will have to take place in the next episode. I've, uh, well, at least we've gotten it around the moon. Technically, it is another lunar satellite, though not quite in the right position to be useful right now. And we will do all sorts of interesting things with what little fuel we have in the next episode. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.